these are genuinely questions and topics that I would talk to my mom and my nani about. It was mostly a content first approach that Navya sat in like beautifully well. This was the first time that the three of us were also working together on something. Season 2 is when I think she's really going to be on that hot seat. Three women and a podcast that's breaking the internet and some myths too. You guys it right. I have two special guests joining me today who are behind a very successful podcast called What the Hell Navya. My first guest is Navya Naveli Nanda, the host of the podcast and Kavita Rajavre, who is the co-founder of IVM Podcast, the brain behind the podcast itself. Thank you so much for talking to Business Insider, uh, Kavita and Navya. As I mentioned, I may sound like a bit of a fangirl because I'm a huge fan of the podcast. What we want to understand today is the behind the scenes story of the entire podcast. So Kavita, I'll start with you. Um, can you tell us that what went into prepping for this entire uh, podcast and the launch, etc. Because it couldn't have been easy, right? Uh, well, I can definitely claim that it wasn't easy, but I think that as an idea or uh, as something that we thought that we could really like work with uh, came to us when, you know, we were pretty much all locked up at home during the lockdown. Um, you know, at that point in time, I felt like, uh, you know, when we first went into, uh, you know, pretty much sitting at home, I think everybody, uh, there was a massive like habit change that kind of came about in how people were consuming content. Um, you know, the initial three months where I think everybody was caught by surprise. I think that there was a little bit of an element of like, we don't even know where we're going with this. But I felt like as more and more people got a little comfortable with just like hanging with themselves and just trying to be able to like, you know, pursue newer things that they were looking at finding. I think uh, there was a little bit of a moment in the sun for podcasting in general. Uh, which kind of brought to the fore a lot of other things that kind of came to us as a, as a learning and as to like listeners as a learning as well. So I feel with Navya's show, uh, the fact that I think like even for her, right, she's a podcast listener, her mom is one too. I think there was an initial idea that kind of like brewed between them that it was like, okay, there's something that we could explore. Um, you know, we, that is when we actually came together and discussed what this could possibly be. Uh, of course, not really going into, uh, you know, deeper details of like, you know, what really actually goes behind the scenes of like actually building a good idea, right? Because that I feel uh, is a reflection of, of how we see uh, talent that we work with or the people that we work with. But I think that with Navya and with, uh, with, with the possibility of also working with Navya's mom, Shweta, it was going to be uh, challenging to see how this could have all panned out. They were actually talking to us about how they're sitting together as a family and discussing everyday things and, you know, learnings of like what, what this time together as a family meant. And I thought that there was some impetus and something in that that could actually really reach out to more people. And that's when we actually toyed with the idea of really having her as a protagonist because I'll be honest, you know, at IBM, we've struggled to have uh, young hosts. Uh, I think storytelling and just, you know, we've spoken about this before, right? I feel like, and I don't want to, don't want to like, you know, say this to like younger people, but I think, you know, you haven't like lived enough life to talk about experiences in a way that people will imbibe and take from. Uh, and I thought it was very important and the challenge was to actually like put her center of the idea and, you know, really have everything else float around her and how everything else around her complements who she is and what she's really seeking to be. So we really didn't really like figure the, you know, expert dynamic around her. But I kind of gave her like a very Dora the Explorer vibe. And I thought that, you know, I mean, that's a great spot for her. She's 24. She has so much to learn. And, you know, let's figure out a format that I think I would have loved as, as, as like, you know, a young podcast listener or something where I just thought, what a beautiful idea where you have three different women from three different generations. There is someone for everybody to take. And I think the fruition of the idea came with what we really had in front of us. At IVM, I think we take pride in what we can make out of things because I'll be honest, you know, we chose the audio first approach and there are so many other limitations that I thought that we had to kind of work around. But I think at the end of it all, we've always managed to build things that see deep sustainability. So that's that's where 
the premise of where this is from. Right. Navya, what about you? What was it about the podcast that interested you or excited you that you said, you know, let's do it because it's a very interesting format as Kavita rightly mentioned. Uh, what was it that excited you in terms of the idea and in terms of the format that you chose to sort of, it's your coming out kind of, uh, uh, you know, plan. So how, what was it, it you were thinking? So I think the idea didn't need a lot of convincing because it's something I'm very comfortable doing, uh, you know, speaking to my mom and my nani. And like Kavita said, I think it was something that we got a chance to do a lot more of during the lockdown. And uh, so that was a very comfortable idea. And I think this was the first time that the three of us were also working together on something. So we felt pretty comfortable kind of going into it. I was excited about the medium because uh, obviously it's the first time I'm doing a podcast, first time I'm you know going through the experience and journey of you know working on a podcast, recording it. So that whole idea um, excited me a lot. Also because my mom and I are big podcast listeners ourselves, so we were excited to venture into a new space. And um, I think what I really liked about the audio first uh, medium is also that you know we were able to be very kind of raw and, and authentic and. You know, versus when you're in front of a camera, you're still a little bit more conscious. But when there's just a mic in the room, sometimes, you know, you do forget that it's there. So the conversation is very natural. It's very authentic. It's very raw. And I think that's exactly what we wanted um, to come out of the show was very transparent and honest conversations. And I think that we've achieved that. And I think that's only possible because of the format and of the medium. I got that, that, you know, you these conversations come naturally. You're clearly close to uh, both your nani as yeah. well as your mom. And that comes through very uh, clearly. But this, what interested me is the subject of the conversations, women's issues. And this I'm going to toss to both of you. The subjects are very relevant, very interesting. And thankfully, uh, it that has become the hero of your entire podcast and yeah. not... A whole lot of other things that people might want to focus on. Kavita, would you want to go take a go at that? The subjects of uh, the podcast? Um, you know, I think we've always kind of, I know like, you know, women get told that, you know, at least y'all are aware that y'all are born on this planet as a woman and that there are enough support groups and all of that. But I think that there is no... Um, you know, ready manual to kind of like follow steps off. I thought that, you know, when you had the opportunity to have three different generations on a show, I thought mostly life experiences is is where I think, you know, as, as an onlooker, as someone who is listening to stuff on the outside, I would have really liked to build, right? Because I'm like, wow, it would be amazing to know what like Mrs. Bachchan's like, you know, uh, growing up or what what did she do at the time that you know she had begun acting or was studying or like heck even for someone like Shweta who's like one shot of 50 but you know just such a different life and I thought that these were people that not many people had like not many viewers or listeners had too much insight on so how do we drive curiosity at the same time drive a an idea that is mostly beneficial to all three people on this panel and that had like genuine interest and when Navya said that you know they were mostly talking about I mean of course that like, like now she's this young entrepreneur and you know I'm sure there's so much for her to learn and so much for her to take from and I thought that she was sitting mostly talking to her grandmother and mother about like you know what are the things and I thought that there was something in this that uh, it could be taken out to like the world at large right I think uh, I've said this before on on another interview where I said that you know I've lived away from home myself uh, for a really long time pursuing a career here in Bombay and I miss hanging out with my mom I you know I didn't get the time to hang out with my grandmom and I thought that this was a great fam format to kind of live vicariously uh, you know just just listening to conversations and listening to a certain voice that you may have missed and I thought for us that was what actually made this format interesting, right? And I thought that that was something that as a network, we want, kind of wanted to pursue. So uh, even our approach on this was never a Navya first approach. It was mostly a content first approach that Navya sat in like beautifully well. And we mostly padded her up from that perspective. But it was always going to be an idea first approach for us. Navya, you you know you mentioned in one of your um, interactions that, that with great power comes great responsibility. I'm a big believer in that as well. Uh, I think today what you created is something bigger than your own self. I think because it's brought together millions of women. I think who are able to relate 
to the conversations that you are having because it touches their lives both as mothers as you know young women uh, career women etc so as do you now realize that you're a content creator and therefore it puts a lot of responsibility on you the kind of conversations that you put through and what's your game plan ahead so i mean i feel like not just me particularly i think all of us to some level are responsible for what we say in public and i think that um you know i've just been given a platform to use and i'm trying to use it in the best way possible and i really talk about things that genuinely mean something to me so even the work that i do it's something that i'm genuinely passionate about and i feel like these are things that should be spoken about a lot more on platforms like this whether it's audio video um social media so i think that this podcast really gave me an opportunity to do that and do that with people who you know i feel have experienced life who can give me great advice and what's great about the topics that we chose as well was that at you know 24 i'm curious about all of these things so it was really a learning experience for me also because these are genuinely questions and topics that i would talk to my mom and my nani about and want to hear their insights so i think it um was something that came a lot out of my natural curiosity so it was not so hard for us to kind of decide what the conversation was going to be about because i already had 10 things on top of my head that i knew i wanted to talk to them about um so yeah i think that it's great that we were able to you know be relatable to people i think that most women probably have experienced what we've talked about in a lot of the episodes you know whether it's on working women or even women's health these are all things that are common to all of us you know no matter where we come from and who we are so i think that was really great um that we were able to connect with people and like kavita said i think it was like they were mostly like living through our conversation and i hope that younger girls my age actually get inspired to talk to their moms and their grandmothers about this i think we're very grateful to have them in our lives and um for as long as we have them we should try and you know talk to them as much as we can they have a lot of great advice uh, to give and i think that this entire experience was almost for me a big learning and i've come out of it you know with a lot of wisdom <laughs> what about your friends people your generation uh as to what is it that they tell you after having heard the podcast what is the reaction what is it do they have more curiosity about other subjects or you know what is the feedback that you've got on your podcast i think you know similar to what you said at the beginning that it's very relatable i think a lot of people have probably had similar conversations or actually in some cases might be hesitant to have these conversations and maybe listening to this is kind of in some way inspired them to you know strike up that conversation or topic with their you know moms and grandmoms so i think that the feedback so far has you know touch wood been really great and we're really happy that people have enjoyed listening to it and maybe even you know taken some inspiration from what we're saying so i think that's probably the overall feedback that we've gotten so far. do you want to take it specific and say <laughs> anything that you know some of your friends might have come and told you which is interesting No I think that they enjoyed you know listening to it and obviously my friends know me but you know they haven't seen my dynamic with my mom and my grandma before so it was new for them as well to see how the three of us interact with each other and what we agree on what we don't agree on so I think it was fun for them to listen to it because it, it's me in a different you know space that they are not used to seeing me in did they suggest any subjects that you should touch upon I think we've covered pretty much yeah. everything that we really didn't leave anything out so it's going to be actually difficult to think of what we could have spoken about more than what we already have Kavita what is it that has made this podcast so successful I think it's it's relatability and value right I think you know um I've always wondered I mean you know this is we it's not like it's our forte to do like you know film content we don't um So when the opportunity to work with Navya and her family really came about it was important for us to not really go down a slippery slope in a way that I think like mostly you know not using this position or this place well I thought it was you know the pressure on 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 delivering that kind of idea was really really high on us right because um i think people also were curious to kind of see what we kind of do sometimes when i'm you know and we run ibm now for 7 years and you know uh i feel like one of the reasons why we've kind of stayed away from doing a lot of film content it's not a forte 
it's not a focus at the same time this country consumes so much of it at the same time i feel i don't come from a content making or film making background myself i'm mostly looking at ideas as to what i would really want to hear or listen or watch rather than what i would like to make right so i feel like where this idea was concerned it was important for us to kind of really approach this from a value and a relatability perspective because i felt like when you look at a family like this the relatability stuff just goes out of the window you're mostly just like okay you know they're a little far out of my reach to kind of even aspire to be that at the same time they are actually living regular lives right we've now known navya for a year and a half and we know for a fact that every time navya is here she's leaving this to go back home and eat rajma chawal so <laughs> eventually all of it boils down to like the regularity of a certain kind of life and i thought to be able to project that aspect of them uh, and i know you probably heard like you know shweta speak on this show as well and she is the voice of reason for i mean and it's great to kind of like have that relatability factor because i thought that the one thing that we knew we'd always kind of drive ourselves into is that there is a you know slightly out of reach factor that you know uh, navya or shweta or even mrs bachchan really actually project which is not true so i think that for for us we kind of wanted to always build you know a value driven relatable idea that most everybody just like hugs like a warm embrace in in a way that we really wanted it to be so the approach really actually came from there now i'm going to ask you specifics about typical podcast the viewership that you see given that as you as we discussed this is a kind of a break from that yeah uh, what about this podcast from a viewership point of view what is what is what are analytics showing so the analytics are been have been great right i feel like you know i mean you know outside of just having them as as the protagonists on the show i think we also experimented like largely with distribution we experimented a lot with marketing we've experimented a lot with just like how people perceive uh podcasts right i think so much organic growth has come our way because if there's anything there's curiosity around a topic like this and you know like i said you maybe finally transcended ourselves from being just a subculture medium to like a counterculture media right and i feel like today finally we don't have to spend time explaining to people what the word podcast really means because that used to be our biggest challenge heck in 2016 we also contemplated dropping that word from our communication and and now today i think it's 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 a household name right it's a household word to use it's like everybody today are is listening or watching a podcast and it's interesting to kind of see like how that growth is coming but we've seen we've seen upwards of like massive numbers and when i say massive numbers like upwards of like a good like you know 18 19 million uh, across uh, across everything that we've done so it's a it's it's where it's at i mean like i said this is this is that spot you were looking for is it primarily women or do you see even male audiences listening so to no, this so no that's one? one thing like the thing is that the 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 topic or the show per se targeted towards women for women made by women uh but you know you can't leave the men out of this right because when the women are having a great time <laughs> you will have men just peeping over and peering over to be curious as to what is it uh you know that these girls are up to right in fact that earlier question you asked navya about like you know what is your friend saying or whatever the feedback that we've got is that guys are all the safe spaces that you're building for women i think it's important for you to build a safe space for men right like and where are we having our conversations and and i guess like you know probably that can be like you know an idea that we kind of pursue and and, and create but um i mean it, it it's just one of those things that i think that if 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 a listener drives or a viewer drives the kind of reaction that you're looking for i think you're in safe hands yeah i think you you have you have a winner in your hand i'm going to ask toss another question at you on say when you mentioned safe spaces i think there are lots of no go areas for women who find it difficult and we discussed this yeah. you know even yesterday uh and this gives an opportunity or a platform for women to talk about some of the things which are very core integral and they mm. really have no way to go and discuss like your mother mentioned uh about you know uh menopause it's genuinely uh it, it's an issue for a lot of women in that yeah. uh, age bracket right but no who do you have to talk about or yeah. about this with so uh you know whether it's women's sexuality whether it is about you know uh physical health 
mental health a lot of these pla- women don't have those places to go to yeah. so would your would, would you consider going into areas like women sexuality for yeah. instance yeah. Uh, yeah there is you know demi more hosts uh, a podcast called dirty diana, dirty diana yeah. uh, which pushes the limit to a different level about women and their fantasies would would something like this work in india i think there is a market for everything right malni trust me when we started way back in 2015 people scoffed at us saying you want to run an audio first business at the time that video was booming i mean really and you know it took us a long time to explain to them that they're completely different habits uh, you know a video consumption app requires you to be seated in a place or whatever to be engaged with a certain kind of device which podcasting doesn't really because once you set something on you can pretty much put your phone away and you can continue listening while you do so many other things um so i feel like at the end of it all uh it it it's not a, i mean they're not competing mediums at all uh, i just think that you know there are some mediums that just allow for longer deeper conversations we've always wanted to kind of fuel that so Would the you... thing is that the no go areas will can be explored right i feel like you know that's what we're getting excited about to kind of see how we can work with people that i also want to explore the space i think the west is already there right i mean look at every popular person you know man or woman uh is hosting a show today every single person because you've realized that this is actually like the next new thing that you kind of want to be on it's also a long form aspect compared to maybe what twitter or instagram or any of these because all of these mediums like actually like cater to a completely different audience but i think that uh things like audio erotica you know uh, things like you know things like women sexuality and you know things like menopause i think the intimacy of of what the medium is allows for deeper more you know uh, more, i mean more content that you know that you probably do not want to kind of listen with like a lot of people around you right and i feel the medium does actually work beautifully well for that and i think india is ready i mean you know i mean it's one of those things that you know what it, you'll never be completely ready but you got to take your punt and start and you'll have people who'll follow what about you navya would you be willing to go into no go areas like women sexuality etc in your podcast i mean i think that the work i do has um, you know more or less covered a lot of these topics and um, through my startup you know ara health we have talked about menopause we have talked about women's sexuality we've talked about sexual health so these are things that i've actually been talking about for a very very long time and um, in a couple of the episodes these are also things that we have discussed between the three of us um so yeah i mean i think if the opportunity allows us to we'd love to have conversations that um you know push the boundary sometimes i think that it's it's really needed and um you know since i have been advocating and talking about it it's also an area or a space that i'm comfortable discussing so yeah i mean i i wouldn't mind um you know raising these topics and having conversations about them i remember in one of your podcasts you talk about talked about financial literacy what money means to people and that's one of my favorite questions as well what does money mean to millennials today and you know do you save do you invest what is your relationship with money i think that as a working individual doesn't despite the age i think that we're all taught about saving and investing and i think that's also something that everybody figures out on their own as they work um you can't take a structure or a format and just throw it across to everyone we're all doing different jobs we're working in different industries um you know our pay varies so it really depends on the individual and what their goals are financially um and i have mine you know i i i'm happy that i am financially independent today and i hope that i can continue to be i think it's something that my mom has really um you know told me about and and emphasized on the importance of it um so yeah i think that as a working individual across ages i think even for mill- millennials we do have our financial goals and i think that we've started taking that a lot more seriously we um respect that and i think that it's really great to see that happening um you know at 20 at 21 22 you see a lot of young people um you know earning making money today and and it makes me happy to see that especially to see a lot of younger women um you know meeting their financial goals and their expectations you are in business terms very well i've seen yes. that <laughs> uh, do you sort of invest in mutual funds stock markets crypto any of those 
So I am a um, you know firm believer in investing in women. So I like to invest in a lot of women-led businesses. That's something that I have talked about very openly as well. So my investment kind of portfolio, if you see, it's mostly women-led businesses. I like also encouraging startups and small-scale businesses. As an entrepreneur, I've been through that journey, and I know how important it is to have. people believe and support your idea so whenever i am looking at investing it's definitely um you know in women led businesses kada you started ibm um, many years ago in 2016 end of 15 how do you see this industry evolve and where are we today as far as this medium is concerned i think i mean Seven years has been a long time. We've learned so much along the way. I mean, you know, earlier, I mean, the challenges have just kind of like changed and you know changed over a period of time. But at the same time, I feel like we're at that kind of stage where uh, people, like I said earlier, you know, know that podcasts exist, that podcasts with an Indian focus exist, and um, you know, we've also now started dabbling in video because you know we now have podcasts that have done a certain run. Uh, hosts have become really very popular, and we also want to be able to add a face to all these amazing voices you've been listening to. So uh, you know, the audience has grown, the way content is being deployed has grown, platforms and distribution networks have improved. Uh, you know, hosting platforms. I mean, you know, we were mostly working on rather like archaic like hosting platforms. You know, in the past, we're now actually experiencing and working with a lot more. Uh, discoverability has always been a big issue with podcasts are uh, concerned, which is something that I think will you know eventually find its way because once you're in the ecosystem, it's it's like getting into a vortex of content, and then once you're in there, there is going to be more and more stuff for you to kind of explore, right? um i mean i only see more you know i see greener days uh, you know where podcasts are concerned right like um yeah, finally there's money in 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 the business you know uh, we worked with a good 35 40 brands last year we worked with maybe double the amount of brands this year uh you know there's obviously like a great opportunity where uh, you know uncluttered advertising is concerned which is something that brands are going to explore and it's imp- it, it, it's interesting to kind of see how long form uh you know frill free content that i think like we've always really wanted to push right i think the finest compliment that we've received at ivm is that you know we like the rise of the public intellectual uh you know we've had to build our own own influencer ecosystem if i may call it that right because uh, i i think that you know the talent that you need to write run a minute long reel over like you know hosting a 45 minute show uh, you know to is it's all different right like it's not that one above the other or any of that it it takes serious skill to be able to do these kind of things um and i feel like you know podcasting is kind of here to stay i think it's finally you know the, it's it's built it's growing into like the hybrid that we really kind of want because uh we've always wanted to make listening fun or even learning fun right so uh we're always mostly going to be in the entertainment space and i think that you know more and more people want value from i mean it's you're not really only stepping out to just entertain yourself today right i think that the opportunity to entertain is a lot it's actually the opportunity to entertain and get smarter through this whole format is where it's at and i think that you know we're an intelligent platform and we just want to continue being that and i think that's why podcasts are always going to be in that category right and i think that that shift in people's general consumption pattern is where the success lies now you know uh, you're a generation that's pretty much obsessed with uh, social media in, in the era of uh, instagram reels short videos etc how does uh, a podcast fit into it and what what's your take your your fans have also been asking you to go you know audio visual on your podcast they've been craving for a video format of your podcast what's your view on that So I think that the kind of conversations that I've been having for the last two years are very difficult to have in sixty seconds, and I'm not somebody who um, is going to shy away from having those conversations. And I think that this podcast allowed me a good thirty-five minutes to talk about something that really means something to me, that's important to me, and I don't think I would have been able to convey that through a real format, you know, in sixty seconds. It's also um, something that I feel we need to talk about a lot more. 
and um, I think this medium, you know, allowed us to do that, allowed me to do that. So I think I would continue using it to have these discussions. And I think that the more we normalize these conversations, not just on social media, but across formats, whether that's video or audio, is when it really will get integrated into society and actually for it to just be a normal, healthy discussion that doesn't need a specific time and place for it to be had. And um, I think that whether I can achieve that through um, a reel or video or audio, I think that's really the goal. It doesn't matter what the format is or what the medium is. As long as the conversation and the meaning gets across to people, I think that's what's most important to me. My next question is something, it's a thought that occurred to me while I was listening. The topics are very relevant and, you know, the conversations are very intense and uh, make a point. But what I felt was perhaps missing was a male perspective on a lot of those conversations. And, uh, you know, I'll, this question is tossed to both of you, Navya, if you can start that. Would you consider bringing in a male voice, whoever it may be, either from family or, you know, whatever, to comment on some of these issues that do have an impact or connect with the men in our lives as well. So would you consider that? Yeah, I mean, I think I've said this before many times is that, um, you know, when we're tackling issues around women empowerment and feminism, I always say that it's not just the woman's responsibility or us as women to fight for that or advocate for that. It's equally a man's responsibility to support the cause. So I think, yeah, we're completely open to having um, you know, a male perspective um, on a lot of the things that we talk about. But I think for this particular show and for this particular season, um, we wanted our voices to be out there first. I think that there are a lot of different perspectives um, that you'll find when you venture out into the world. And this is just us, you know, the three of us, what we feel as women from different generations. And I think that to establish that first, we wanted it to actually just be the women. And um, of course, it's always great to have, um, you know, some, um, a man's perspective as well. And we'd be definitely open to having that. So you'll we'll, we'll consider bringing in the men from the family into the show as well? Yeah, or just, you know, there are a lot of men who actually work in the women empowerment space. They work in feminism. We have a lot of gynecologists that are men. So even, you know, experts from that field to come in and talk about some of the topics that we've spoken about would be great. Kaita, what, about, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, baby steps, like what she said earlier about like, you know, first let's get like, you know, the girls together, if you can get the women together to at least like get to talk to one another. So that's step one. I guess step two is to kind of generally involve the men because, you know, we could be fighting for all the kind of things that we want. But like, you know, if we don't have them in our hood, then I don't know how because it's really not only our battle. Right. So uh, initially when I was just talking to and I spent so much time with Navya on Zoom. Right. This was again when we were locked up at home and I would generally see what her banter around, <laughs> you know, hanging at home, who's disturbing her, who's talking to her, who are, what are the things that are just generally going around in her background and how we could like can like actually like have a way to kind of get that to be a part of what the idea is right see a podcast is an extension to someone's personality and for us normally what happens is that we spend so much time with with someone that we're developing an idea with uh, you know which was missing in this time right because we couldn't get her to the office we couldn't meet her I didn't get her body language and now I'm trying to like learn and understand all of these things about Navya while I sat with her on a zoom zoom screen right and uh, uh, that's exactly how the name what the hell Navya also really actually came about I realized like through all the conversations that we were having her grandmother and mother constantly <laughs> just kept saying what the hell Navya why are we even here what are we doing where is this going and it was one of the things that stuck with me and I was just like you know actually more than anything I think the hook to this show is what the hell Navya <laughs> because I think there's a what the hell opportunity that all of us face with our parents yeah. and mothers and you know like and grandparents and I thought that there was you know an opportunity there and um, uh, it and to answer your question, whether we'll have like a, a male perspective, of course. I mean, you know, I I, I don't think we're, we're those kind of people would be like try and like have our little safe space and leave the rest out. I think if we have to dominate this world, we need everybody to be on a platform and we've got to do that. So, yeah, the if if if, uh, if it I mean, if the idea allows us to kind of incorporate that, we will get there maybe in season two. This is a related question that if you were to sort of give advice now that you have experience, <laughs> Uh, to other people who want to become creators because we track the creator economy very closely at Business Insider. So what is the one advice that you'll give to content creators? 
I'm not an expert and I really have no one near as much experience to be giving advice to anyone this is my first time really you know exploring the content creation space but I think something I try to do is just be real and be authentic I think that out there everybody tries to project the best versions of themselves and I think sometimes in the flaws and in our mistakes are the biggest learnings so um i think through this episode i have probably you know been put in my place many times by <laughs> both the guests that i've had on the show and i think that's completely okay so i would probably say that you know it's fine to not always have the best most polished version of yourself out there because that's what will make you most relatable to people not everyone is perfect not everybody has the right answers looks the best every single day and i think that putting just yourself as you are is i think the best way to go about it in my experience but then again i'm not an expert so i don't know i would be asking for expert advice it's just <laughs> yeah your, this is my this would be my learning and my advice yeah awesome. i think that you know i think like uh, uh, gen z or even millennials like put out what you yeah. really are good at rather than seeing a gap and fitting into that right i mean yeah. i've always told so many people come to us about like i think i'll be good at hosting a show and i'll be i'll be good at this i'll be good at that and i think the world needs a show and i'm just like no but the world needs a lot of things i don't know whether you're going to be the most fitting uh idea or or person for that right but i think like you know leading with what you think you're genuinely good at yeah. because i feel that will hold you far better in good stead than a lot of other things And for our viewers, I have a request to both of you. Can you give a sneak peek into season two and tell us what season two is going to be all about? If not all about, then what is it like? Now we're stumped. She's like, Ah, uh, Kavita. Is there like a season like, two? <laughs> What's happening? So no, the thing is that you know, I'm glad that people have liked. In fact, this week is our last episode um, oh on God. this particular <laughs> series. I know, and it's been such a long journey. And I think what has come about from this experience is that. Uh, <laughs> ideas can be great right i feel like you need like high quality people to be able to you know push that idea forward and you know I, I, the one thing that i've worked with on navya for the last year has to mostly train her to hold her space in amongst the people that she's always going to be surrounded with it wasn't easy for her to deal with the uh, you know grandmother and mother dynamic and you know it was important for her to also not come across as an impolite kid and so the the workings of that was something that we really worked and i hope like season 2 we'll see more of navya uh, we'll see more of 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 what she really actually wants to pursue and her uh, like more of her thoughts and ideas and actually my focus is 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 mostly on that right i feel like you know right now we've kind of built her we've had her padded up with a lot of these other great voices but i think season 2 is when i think she's really going to be on that hot seat and <laughs> you're going to be able to see what 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 the magic of navya is going to be so we're excited about that what's what your kavita said <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you would like to do in season 2 I think I mean yeah I mean I'd love to get a chance to meet um, more people who I can learn from I think like I said this was a big learning experience for me and I want to take that kind of bank and knowledge and have those conversations with maybe some different people people who I wouldn't normally come across in my everyday life and see how that goes you know learn from them so I think that's what I'm excited about the most Do you have a guest wish list <laughs> We'd love to have you on the show if you would agree to be on it. <laughs> As a fan, hundred percent, you'd have me. There's no doubt on that. We'll have a special so we fan really, episode. We haven't really thought about. Yeah, we haven't really thought about. Yeah, we should guess, probably like you know actually yeah we've 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 not gotten there but we're hoping to kind of get a little bit of a blueprint ready soon. Yeah. Absolute delight talking to both of you. Thank you so much, Navya. Thank you, Thank you so much, Kavita, Thanks, for talking Mali. to Business Insider. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. Thanks.